So, these nuggets are um, made from chicken, but they're made to um, 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 emulate the taste of like, like non-chicken nuggets. So, these nuggets are made from chicken, but they're made to emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Dope. Let's boost that sound quality. Emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Dope. Non-chicken nuggets. Non-chicken nuggets. But they're made to emulate the taste of vegan nuggets. Sounds tasty. Every time I watch that video, I find something new. And this time I learned that he doesn't actually like the chicken nuggets at the end, no, which is very sad. Yeah. Right. I was liking it up until the very end, but I still like it. <laughs> I still like it. I still love it. Welcome to Podcast Marketing 101, everybody. We're very excited to be here. We've got an amazing hour planned for you. We're going to tell you everything we know about podcast marketing, but let's reiterate, we are keeping it to a 101 scale. So this is really our principles for podcast marketing. My name is Ariel Nissenblatt. I am the Community Marketing Manager at Descript. I also have been working on various podcasts, doing marketing in various ways since 2017. So I'm very excited to share my my learnings with you all today. And I will pass it to Ashley to introduce herself. Yeah, I'm Ashley Hamer. I'm the managing editor here at Descript. I am an indie podcaster myself, and I will be the babe in the woods in this uh, scenario because um, I've learned a ton from Lauren and Ariel, and I'll just be asking a bunch of questions about podcast marketing because that's been a new journey for me. We and, love it. Yeah. And then Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren Passell. Um, I love podcast marketing more than anyone should. And I am the founder of Tank Media, which is a podcast growth company. And I have a few newsletters, uh, podcast newsletter and podcast marketing magic. Awesome. Thank you both for introducing yourselves. Before we get into it, let's discuss what we are going to be talking about today on our Podcast Marketing 101 chat. First, we've already done the welcomes, then we'll give you some reminders, then we will talk about our podcast marketing examples, we'll talk about where we think most people go wrong when it comes to podcast marketing, then we will discuss what is reasonable growth for a podcast, we'll then get into one of our favorite philosophies when it comes to podcast marketing, which is the concept of podcast friends promo and feed swaps. Then we'll, we'll have a pitch party. We'll explain what we mean by that. Just get excited for a party. Then we'll talk about podcast listening apps. How does that sound, Ashley and Lauren? Sounds great. Party. All right, a few reminders before we get started. Please use the Q&A section throughout this time, throughout our chat today. We would love to answer your questions. Christiana, who is our community manager, is going to be answering those questions. If you have a question that you specifically want us to answer on air, feel free to specify that. We would also love for you to keep the chat going. Use the chat for reactions, to meet each other, even to share your podcast. What are you working on? What video and audio are you creating? We would love to hear from you. We would love to see the things you make. And especially if you use Descript and Squadcast by Descript, we would love to highlight you. So please do share those links. If we freeze on Crowdcast, refresh your browser. And if you continue to have trouble, feel free to go over to YouTube. We are also streaming live there. This session is recorded, so if you had to come in late or you need to leave early, don't worry. You will be able to see the rest of our chat today on our YouTube channel, which is, again, just by go to YouTube and search for Descript. If you want more help, something beyond what we are discussing today, please go to help.descript.com. That is the best place on the Internet to get help with Descript. And we would love for you to join our community Discord uh, we do a lot over there on Discord. We have uh, weekly office hours for everything um, that you can possibly imagine. And we also are soon going to be implementing uh, remote recording office hours. So in addition to our Descript office hours, we will soon also be having a half hour dedicated every week to remote recording with Descript. So we just put the QR code up on the top of the screen and... I think we're ready to get started, but I will say that you may want to stick around to the end of our chat today because we will be giving away um, some free Descript licenses. So a, a month, I'm sorry. 
I got very excited. I got ahead of myself there. We're going to be giving away a free month of Descript Pro. Actually, I'll put up the QR code for that right now. If you want to scan that, use code podcast30 for a free month of Descript Pro. And uh, we would love to see what you make with Descript Pro. Sound good? Awesome. We will have that QR code up again towards the end of our session today. So don't worry if you missed it. All right, let's get started. We'll start with some podcast marketing examples. So what brings us here today? I would love it if, Ashley, if you could tell us a bit about Taboo Science and what you do when it comes to marketing your podcast. Yeah, so actually I got started in podcasting through, like I was actually doing corporate podcasting every day as my day job um, with Discovery. I, I did a daily podcast called Curiosity Daily. Um, and then I I got laid off, common common story in the podcasting world. Um, and I was, um, at that moment, I was also doing my own indie podcast. So it was really interesting to do something from soup to nuts all by myself and um, kind of figure out how to market something myself without a team, without resources behind me that were, you know, people just handling it for me. Um, and it has been quite a journey and quite a challenge. But uh, I think like a lot of people, I used to just post the episode to social media and hope for the best. Um, and that never really seemed to do anything. So I've actually been taking a lot of y'all's tips uh, for for podcast marketing, doing a lot of promo swaps, did a couple of feed drops. Um, and I think my favorite thing to, uh, favorite way to, to promote my podcast is just by guesting on other podcasts because it's a lot of fun. You, you make more friends, you know, and uh, you get to to share what you know. So that's that's been my ex experience, yeah. Yeah, um, before I go to you, Lauren, I would love to know in the chat for the folks who are here, if that resonates with you, if the idea of posting on social media and it not really doing anything for the growth of your podcast, is that an experience that you have? We would love to address that. So please feel free to let us know what is working for you when it comes to marketing your podcast and what is not working for you when it comes to marketing your podcast. Lauren, I have the logo for Tink Media here. What is Tink Media? How did you start it? And what are some of the principles that you abide by when it comes to growing audiences? Yes, I've been working in media for 17 years from print magazine to Double Wears Prada Days to dating apps, uh, lots of different kinds of websites. I worked for Barnes & Noble. I've done social media and I worked in book publishing for a while. And while I was there, um, I was not on the PR team or the marketing team, but I loved podcasts. I had a podcast called Podcast Podcast and a podcast newsletter called Podcast Newsletter, which I still have. And the PR team would ask me to pitch our authors to podcasts because they knew I knew the space. Um, and they knew I liked the space because I was always trying to get them to sign up for my newsletter. So I realized that I was doing that. It wasn't my job. And I realized why some PR teams were not super strong at it. And it's because it's this whole new world that a lot of PR teams don't have the bandwidth to understand. So initially, Tink was only for authors to get them on podcasts to promote their books. The more I started working with podcasters, the more they started saying, can you do a podcast tour for me? Can you do this for me? So the company has just evolved based on what people ask us to do. So it's promo swaps, feed swaps. It's all sorts of different kinds of growth. We get more and more creative with every single campaign. You know, it's a big team of 11 people now. And, um, you know, we always are changing the name of it because as the industry evolves, so do we. I love that. Always great to be on your toes when it comes to marketing and keeping up with trends in audio, but also in just general digital content creation. I have the logo here for one of my podcasts, which is Trailer Park, the podcast trailer podcast, which is a podcast about podcast trailers. And um, I am going to be pulling some of my examples from my experience promoting that podcast. If you're interested in learning more about that, it's um, just search for Trailer Park wherever you get your podcasts. Essentially, on every episode, we feature a trailer and then we talk about that podcast trailer. But I did a lot of interesting, in my opinion, and innovative way. Um, innovative tactics to market that show. And it is doing pretty well. We're coming back with season two relatively soon. So those are all of the examples that we are coming to you here today. Those are the examples that we're going to be kind of pulling from today. Of course, we will also probably bring in some more examples. But with that, we'll get started. Sound good? I heard a little bit of an echo for a second. Yeah. All right. So where do most people go wrong? We asked a moment ago, Ashley brought this up, Social media. 
We're not saying that social media is wrong. We are saying, though, that social media is tough when it comes to podcast marketing. Lauren, do you want to take this one? Where do people go wrong when it comes to social media? Yes, social media is really good for the community that you already have. It's, you know, I write about podcasts and podcast newsletter. I like to be able to tag someone. So, um, you know, retweeting people that are tagging with you, tagging you, interacting with your audience, even polling people, asking what they're doing, looking them up and seeing who these people are that follow you and what, what other things they like. It's a great tool. It's great to post when you have a new episode out to remind people. But, you know, it isn't the best way to grow the show. It isn't the best way. So that's why if that's all you're doing, that's great news because that means there's a lot of other things you're not doing. And I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons why, but one big reason is a lot of people on social media don't, un they, unfortunately, they don't all listen to podcasts. And um, so you're targeting a lot of people that are not going to listen. It's very hard to convert a non-listener to a listener. Um, the other reason is when people are on social media, they often like to stay on social media, so they won't leave. And, um, the thing is, you know, a lot of times I'll tell podcasters this, and I think podcasters that have spent a lot of time on social media, I feel like they're like, no. And sometimes they'll argue with me and they'll say, my tweets get a lot of likes. And I'm like, that means you have great friends that like your, your work. They're supporting you. They might not have listened to your episode and they're probably not a new audience. So those aren't the people you want to be targeting. And then sometimes someone will say, well, I, you know, my TikTok went viral. And my question is, but how many of those people converted? That can be a separate goal to get big on TikTok, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those people are listening. Yeah, I'll say I, I have a TikTok that hit 1 million a uh, wow. couple, couple months ago. And you want to know how much I saw in my analytics? I would love to Nothing. know. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I even mentioned my podcast at the end and stuff. It was not. Nope. Did not happen. Still, but, it's not, still very cool. Thank you. And thank I you. would argue it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a waste. It's good. It's getting people to understand who you are. Yep. Some of those people down the line will see that you have a podcast if they follow you elsewhere and they may convert to becoming a listener down the line. But I think it's important to to just sort of put yourself in the shoes of the people who are scrolling social media. When you are sitting down at the end of the day, to scroll on social media, you are probably not thinking, let me go on social media to try to find a podcast to listen to. You're going on social media to scroll on social media, to find out what your aunt is up to, to find out what your crush from high school is up to. You're not there to get media recommendations. So while you might see media recommendations and they will contribute to your overall feeling of that creator, they may not push you to listen to that show right then and there. Where else do people go wrong? They spend money in the wrong places. Lauren, where do we hate where people spend money. It's not always a mistake, but it can be. Go ahead. Well, it depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to go viral on social media, you could spend money there. But if your goals are to get downloads, don't spend money on social media. There are so few things that we can say with certainty about podcast marketing. Anyone that tells you that there's one thing that's true is probably lying. But I can say with almost my entire heart and soul that spending your money on social media is a waste. Ariel, thoughts? I think that if you are driving people to a landing page for the sake of getting them to subscribe to your newsletter or for the sake of getting them to potentially buy a course, that's great. However, pointing people to your podcast is a very difficult ask because you're asking them to do multiple things. You're asking them first to click on your ad and then to press play on your episode. It's too many steps and it's very hard to get people to actually do that when you are serving them an ad, when you're serving them a paid ad. So I recommend spending money elsewhere. We don't necessarily have time allocated in this hour to talk about that, but if people are interested in where it is worth it to spend money, we can possibly do a marketing 102 or a 201 or however, whatever the next level up from this would be. I wanna address this question that we got. Are you counting YouTube as social or is that something totally different? And this is complicated because when people, if you go on Google and you say best ways to market your podcast, you will find a lot of people who say, start posting regularly on TikTok, create a blog, um, create a course. Those are all extra things that in and of themselves need to be marketed. So I think YouTube is interesting. I think it can be a place for you to post about your podcast. YouTube does have social features. There actually is, you know, things that you can explore beyond just posting videos. You can post text and you can post um, comments and things like that. So you can use it in a social media sense. But I think there's no one blanket answer to this. And um, if you um, kind of want to get a little bit more 
granular on this. I would recommend um, playing around with uploading some videos, but not necessarily committing full force to it. Lauren, Ashley, do you want to contribute to that a little bit? I mean, I'm a I'm a huge proponent of getting on YouTube for podcasters, and I know I know I'm uh, Ariel and I kind of differ on this, but no, um, I, I I'm I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> totally, totally. But but I think that I think it's just so important to like if you can find a way that doesn't take a ton of time out of your your workflow, um, which there are ways, and I I think Descript is a great way to do this. Um, posting on YouTube will get you uh, what what podcast listening doesn't get you, and that is an algorithm. Um, YouTube will surface your episode to people who might be interested in it, which podcast apps just don't do. Spotify sort of does, but um, that's that's the thing that I think is really powerful about YouTube. And so I, I don't count it as um, in, in this bucket of right. social media doesn't do anything. Yeah. I wonder if the question was about money, though, and it's mm. just kind of like, what are your goals? If your goals are to get a lot of YouTube followers, then yeah, sure, spend money on YouTube. But um, if you're trying to get a lot of podcast downloads, I would say it as a, a backwards or twisted way, a longer path towards getting those downloads because there are better ways to spend the money. And yeah, we can talk about that uh, another time. So I want to address a question that I'm just getting in the chat, which is, where do you think investing money in podcast marketing gleans the greatest ROI? That's something everyone with a brain wants to know. I will say I, I have a brain and I would like to know that as well. Uh, we do have some tactics. We do have some places that we do recommend spending money. However, this is going to be actually the 101 course on podcast marketing. So we're going to be focusing on the free things to do to grow your podcast. We will do another session. It seems like there is appetite for it to learn about where to spend money. So heard that there is interest in that and we will touch on it. Ashley, go ahead. I would I would love to just say one thing about investing money though. I I uh a while back I was thinking about investing money into advertising my podcast and I decided not to and that was because it's this whole thing about ROI. Uh am like what is my goal? Is my goal to make that money back? Well, I don't currently have I don't currently monetize my podcast. So it, it, is it just to get more listeners? Well, what what is that going to get me? And it, it kind of just came down to, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to spend money on my podcast at this moment. Um, so really think about your goals before thinking about investing money into it, because there are a lot of free ways that we're going to talk about that you can use. Right. I think that's a good question for everyone to think about right now. What are your goals? Because not everyone's goals are the same. So it's just always, sometimes we ask our clients that at Tink and they're like, huh, no one's ever asked me that before. I've never really thought about it before. I thought everyone's goals were the same, but yours could be different. That's allowed. <laughs> awesome. So let's go to some of those free ways. So we'll start off with one of our favorite principles, which is collaboration, which is uh, competition over collaboration. This is where most people go wrong. They see your close con quote unquote competitors as, um, as competition rather than co potential collaborators. Lauren, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I was speaking once and someone in the audience stood up and said, we, we were talking about promo swaps, which is something which we'll, we'll get, get into. into. Yeah. And if you listen to podcasts, you know, that's when you hear someone say, if you like this podcast, you'll also like this podcast, but we will get into that. But someone said, why would I do that? Why would I send someone to another podcast? And I actually was speechless. I'm never speechless for a second because, and I think I said, I think if you don't want to work with other podcasters, I think you might be in the wrong field because that's how you, the best way to grow. And it is what this community is all about. It's why I love my job so much. And I think collaboration and borrowing from each other's audiences is what works. And I would say to that person, if I had them here right now, focus on making a really good show and don't worry about uh, sending people to competition, a competitor. Um, most podcast listeners will listen to multiple shows. So they're not going to have only one or only with this type of show once, you know, I'm only going to listen to one of these shows. They'll listen to more. Don't ever worry about it. It's worth it to collaborate. And we will get into a lot of the different collaborations that you can work on with partners. People also go wrong by not prioritizing the power of the launch. And we will talk about how important it is to capitalize on that launch. And then where where some folks go wrong is that they forget to make mountains out of molehills. I know people say don't make mountains out of molehills, but when it comes to press for your podcast, I highly recommend making mountains out of molehills. We'll get into how to do that. Basically, what I mean is that you should celebrate absolutely everything when it comes to your podcast. 
All right, let's go to the next slide. We'll get in more depth on all of these. What is reasonable growth when it comes to growing a podcast? What are good download numbers? I know a lot of people have these questions. What is an ideal season length? I, we had somebody ask what is a season and why you should do one. We'll talk a little bit about social media impressions, and then we will talk about when to stop and reassess. So first, Ashley, what's your take on this? What is your reaction to the question? What are quote unquote good download numbers? That's the forever question, right? Forever and if question. you start talking to other podcasters and they start telling you your num their numbers, you start feeling either like your numbers are nothing or that like, ah, oh, wow, I'm doing really well. And it's like, it's so hard. Honestly, this was a question that I wanted to ask you guys because I don't have the answer, but I think it's probably very individual and it's very much related to your your history as a show. What do you guys think? I, I just want to stop and say, Ashley, you asked me on the private chat if we could hear your cat and I could not, but it seems that people can hear your cat. So. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so just so folks know, the cat's name is Aglet, which is a great name. And mm -hmm. so now you have a name to associate with the meows. Lauren, yes. go ahead. What are good download numbers? Well, I was really glad you didn't ask me first because it is a, a very difficult question, but I think it goes back to what Ashley was saying before about um, identifying your goals. And I think as long as you're growing, you can keep on going. And I think Ooh. we're going to about... Have you said that out loud before? That's good. <laughs> No, um, I think if you're not growing, that's when you have to reassess. And we will talk about this, but like, you know, time to change things up. But if you are growing, I think you're on to something. But um, I can't say that there's a good download number, honestly. Yeah, I agree. I, I also just want to add that there, it depends at what stage you're at when it comes to download numbers. If you're talking about potentially being able to monetize, you can monetize at 100 downloads per episode. I think sometimes people believe that there is a threshold that you need to get to in order to monetize. But depending on the type of audience that you have, if you have 100 very engaged uh, listeners who are really coming to you because you cater to a specific niche, you could potentially monetize that audience. So good download numbers or a certain number of downloads in order to get to a certain place, I want to dispel that myth. There are a lot of different ways to reach your potentially perfect audience without the, needing to have 10,000 people tuning in week after week. And, what and is some of those, some of those big shows, sorry, uh, Ariel and I interrupt each other all the time. Some <laughs> of those big shows don't have super engaged listeners. And if you have a niche, like Ariel said, you could have really engaged listeners. And also I've had clients before who they had a therapy business or something, and all they really wanted was maybe one new client a month or something. You don't need 10,000 listeners to achieve that goal. So this goes back to the goal question. What is your goal? Why would, why do you want good download numbers in the first place? So let's get into this next piece, which is season length. Why should you do seasons and how do you plan them? Ashley, you do seasons. So tell us about your strategy there. I do. So the the really lazy version, I mean, the, the really easy, lazy answer is that it gives me a break um, because podcasting is a very regular, you know, it's, it's, it's hard work and it's nice to be able to just take a few weeks, a few months to, um, to reassess. Uh, the, it, it also helps me, uh, you know, plan and batch for uh, for higher quality episodes in the future. And something that I am planning to do with my next season, I'm actually wrapping up uh, my third season of Taboo Science right now. And with my fourth season, uh, I plan to do a themed season, which is a really great reason to do th seasons because with a theme, you can market it differently. You can, uh, you can, uh, pitch people with like this very specific thing, even if your show is usually covering, you know, like wide, a wide area of topics, um, having a themed episode can, or season can really open up your, your marketing potential. So, yeah. I love that. Lauren, would you like to add to that? Yeah. Um, as a marketer, I love seasons because it gives you a reason to get people excited. Newsletter writers, apps, if, you know, everyone. It's like, we're coming back. And also as a listener, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Sometimes if you're on all the time, people might take you for granted. Oh, we don't want that. <laughs> um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about social media impressions. And we touched on this before, but the idea that your social media impressions won't necessarily contribute to the growth of your podcast. Ashley, do you mind just going into a little bit more depth on that video that reached a million? Was it a million views, a million likes? And then um, if, yeah. go ahead, tell us a little bit about that. Oh yeah. I mean, it was just, it, it was a video uh, on TikTok that I did that was 
referencing something in a podcast. It was not a clip of a podcast. And at the very end, I said, if you want to learn more, go to go to Taboo Science and uh, reached a million views. And it yeah, and it did nothing. Uh, it, did, it did nothing to my to my downloads, but it did add to my TikTok followers. So does that mean maybe down the line that some of those followers would start listening if if I keep making more TikToks and I keep talking about the podcast potentially, but um, it's a it's a long game there. Yeah. yeah. And to address the last bullet point here, when should you stop and reassess? This is what I really like about seasons. It allows you to number one, take a break. Number two, relaunch when you're ready and to create a whole party out of that launch. You can write a press release. You can pitch yourself. We'll get into the details on pitching and press releases and things like that. But it also allows you to, once your season is finished, look at your analytics, figure out which of your episodes did better than others. Maybe the ones that had guests were more successful. Maybe the ones where you titled your episodes in a different naming convention than you did for the other episodes did better. And that allows you to say, you know what, next season, we're going to do more like this and see if that if that works for us. It's all about guessing and checking. It's all about A-B testing. Um, and that is a really great way for you to decide in the long run, is this worth it for you? And I, I think this is a good place to bring in one of my favorite pieces of advice, which is that you should always have three reasons for making your podcast other than money and downloads. Keep those reasons close to you. Figure out what they are. Those reasons could be, and feel free to steal these. Number one, I like playing around with technology. I really like having a microphone. Number two, I like to talk to people in my profession that I wouldn't get to talk to otherwise. Number three, I like to say that I have a podcast. It can be just as easy as that. Of course, you can come up with a million other reasons. Maybe it contributes to who you are in your field. People like that you have a podcast. People listen to you. Maybe it gives you one or two new clients every month or every year. Those are all great reasons. Ashley, Lauren, any other reasons come to mind for you? I like to learn new things. There and you that's go. what I get to do on my show. Yeah. I love that. All right. Lauren? Oh, I was just also going to say um, time is limited. People that work in seasons probably have more, um, you know, they're more carefully curating the work that they put out. And also they have more time for marketing. Love that. And I just want to bring up one comment here that says, huh, I never considered using a season break to give me a break. Thank you. I love that very much. And I also just want to say, because this question sometimes comes up, how many episodes in a season? How, you know, how long should your episodes be? How long should your seasons be? To that, I say there is no right answer and it really can be whatever you please. And that is the beauty of open RSS and the fact that there are no networks in podcasting. Your episodes don't need to be a certain length. Your seasons don't need to be a certain length. You can do whatever you want and it's beautiful. All right. Let's go to our next slide over here. Let's talk about podcast friends, promo and feed swaps. Lauren, I put podcast friends in caps because I think we should essentially trademark it at this point. What is a podcast friend? A podcast friend is another podcast that you think has the audience that you want and you think those listeners would want to hear your show and someone that you're well aligned with. How would you define it? Yeah, I would say the first thing that I do when I start working with a podcast or when I meet a new podcaster who asks me, how do I grow my podcast is I think to myself, who are your podcast friends? Who are the people that align with your show, whether it's in tone, whether it's in scope, whether it's somebody who is really making a podcast very similar to yours? Who are the people that you are going to be collaborating with? Actually, I would also I, say, oh, sorry. it's okay. We interrupt each other. Lauren, yes. It doesn't have to be as literal as you think it does. <laughs> um, you can hate them. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, podcast if, you enemies. Food, if you have a food podcast, it doesn't just have to be other food podcasts. We all contain multitudes. I listen to trash celebrity podcasts and I listen to the daily and everything in between. So it's more of a tonal thing, I think. And that's why maybe surveying your listeners and asking what other things they listen to, think about what other shows you listen to. Um, don't just stick. In fact, it might be interesting to experiment working with podcast friends that are a little bit different than you and seeing how that goes. Love it. Can I just say how like revolutionary this idea has been for me personally, because Please. I and I think I've told you guys this before, but uh, for me, podcast marketing or the idea of marketing was just it was self promotion. And I was very uncomfortable with self promotion. It just doesn't feel like me. It feels braggy. It feels like I'm trying to get something from other people. 
And when I thought about the, it as podcast friends, you do things for your friends. You, you, it's, it's tit for tat. You do something for them. They do something for you. And you're trying to raise each other up. That completely changed my thinking about podcast marketing and it made it so much easier for me. And I hope it does that for, for some of the listeners here. I love that. Shout out to the person who said that this webinar is iconic. We see you. We love you. <laughs> we'll keep doing what we're doing. All right. Um, we have a lot of questions popping up, all that we will touch on. Um, so I want to just talk about this very briefly. Um, actually, let's back up a little bit. Let's go baseline. What is a promo swap? How would you define it as if this were a, a dictionary right now? Let's hear from you, Lauren. A promo swap is when two podcasts uh, recommend the other one in about a 30 second ad. It's really just a 30 second ad for another podcast. And it can look like many things. Lauren said it's about 30 seconds. It could be 15 seconds. It could be 60 seconds. It could be much longer. It could be much shorter. It can sound like an ad or it can sound a lot more organic. And that's sort of where the idea of being a listener comes into play. Lauren and I are huge advocates for being students of the medium. So when you are on the hunt for podcast friends, podcast category or Spotify and check out what shows are being featured or check out what shows are charting. Listen to those shows, listen to how they do promo swaps, listen to how they collaborate with other shows, become a student of the medium and then innovate upon that. Anything to add there, Ashley? Nope. All good. Great. Katie says that she has had many podcast friends become actual friends. It's such a beautiful thing. And if this is Katie Hearn Church, uh, hello, my real friend in real life. I love that. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this. What is a feed swap? Ashley, have you ever done a feed swap? So uh, I have not. Uh, it's it's complicated. Um, I have done a promo. This goes to the sw swapping with larger and smaller shows. I have uh, reached out to shows that are much bigger than me. And um, I haven't known how much bigger they were until we started talking, right? Like you're like, mm, I think you're bigger than me. And then you start talking numbers and you're like, oh yeah, you are, you are bigger than me. Uh -huh. And um, so the way that I have kind of made those things work is by swapping a promo swap with a feed swap, with a feed drop. So I will, and basically what a feed drop is, is a, instead of doing an ad for them on your episode, you drop an entire episode from their feed into your feed. So people can listen to an entire episode without without having to find their show. And that can help them, you know, get used to a new show and maybe go seek it out and, and subscribe themselves. So it's a bigger ask and a bigger reward um, than a than a promo swap, which is why I sometimes offer it to bigger shows than me um, as, as kind of a, I understand that you need more from me than you're going to get. I'm going to get more from you than you're going to get from me. So let's do it this way. I love that. Lauren, yeah. let's add to that. If you have a podcast with small listenership, what can you offer? How do you leverage absolutely everything that you have? Let's talk about leverage. Well, I think Ashley's solution is amazing, but also think what other things do you have? Do you have um, a newsletter? Could you do something on social media? Could you do multiple promos in exchange for the other show only doing one for you? I think it's negotiating. It's thinking, what do I have and what do I want and what do they have and what do they want? And every single podcast friendship, or we call them podcast playdates, mm -hmm. I think every playdate can look a little bit different. I and actually, that. I do want to mention too, that uh, sometimes I've found that offering that bigger, that bigger thing to them isn't always necessary. Sometimes really big shows are totally fine with promoting something that they like. If they, if they listen to your show and they enjoy it and they think their audience would like it, they might just come out and say, yeah, let's do a promo swap. Let's, I don't care how much, how many more downloads you're going to get than I am. Uh, let's just do it. So always, always leave yourself open to that. Yeah. I think the principle behind that is if you are making really great content and you find a potential partner who believes in your content, the people that listen to your feed drop on their show are not going to think of it as an ad. They're going to think of it as great content that the host that they love has now recommended to them. So the incentive for the person whose podcast is much bigger than you to feature your podcast on their feed is this is just really great content. It allows me to potentially take a break. I could take a week off if I drop your podcast episode in my feed. And it allows the listeners who love me very much to say, Ariel always brings us just such great content from other shows in addition to her own show. So I love that as well. 
Let's go into the concept of becoming a correspondent. Lauren, we like this. We have an example of this that we often point to with the 10 news and um, yeah. the newsworthy. Do you want to talk about that? Yes, we, we're working with a kids show that I highly recommend called the 10 news. Um, it's kind of the kind of new show you could listen to with your kids. So parents listen to it also. And we uh, set up a podcast play date with the podcast called the, um, the newsworthy, which is adult news and once a month at the the very last episode of the month they would exchange uh, a little bit of news from their neck of the woods at the end of an episode so the 10 news would have like a file exchange and just say hey it's us your friends from the 10 news here's what we've been talking about this month here's one story that we love this month here's a fact from that we learned this month and they would do that on each other's shows we this is wonderful in so many for so many reasons because first of all maybe someone didn't hear the one promo you did and also we believe if you find the right audience that's what that's another reason we call them friends right you don't just do one thing with your friends if you find the perfect podcast friend figure out a new way to work with them and go back to them again and again love it Lauren, in a moment, I'm going to have you talk about Tink's promo swap database. But before we get to that, I want to backtrack a bit for a feed swap. Ashley, do you do an intro for yourself? Uh, yes, I do. Um, so I basically say, hey, I'm either taking a week off. For me, I do it. I, I put out episodes every two weeks. So I put it in the middle and I say, hey, I'm, I'm working on a new episode for next week. Uh, you know, but but in the meantime, here's a show that I love. Here's why I love it. Uh, without further ado, here's the name of the episode. And then I, and it goes. Yeah, I think um, if you want to hear an example of somebody who does this really well, of course, Ashley, check out her feed drops. Another one is Roman Mars, 99% Invisible. Every once in a while, he, he will drop an episode from another show, and he always does a great job of seamlessly explaining why this episode is going to be worth it for you to listen to and how it fits in exactly with his show. You're it so right. It sounds it's so seamless that you don't even think it's another show. It sounds like he's just finding a show that he loved and yeah. was like, hey, you guys guys want to listen to this? And it's like, it doesn't sound like it was planned out at all. It's great. It's the best. Yeah. Really great example. What are some reasonable expectations? Ashley, you've done a lot of feed swaps. You've done a lot of promo swaps. What has it brought you? Um, so far, it's, it's, you know, it's very hard to, to grow a podcast. What can I say? Um, so it's, it's, not necessarily you're not necessarily going to see a huge jump um unless it's a really huge show now i did uh i did recently produce an episode for Twenty Thousand hertz and they mentioned my podcast at the end of that and huge. that got me quite a bump Ooh. um so that was really nice uh but it has to you know that that is a massive show and it that is does not come around all the time um so you know yeah reasonable expectations honestly it's just getting getting honestly my my expectation is that i get my name in front of more people and and i slowly grow my show if my show keeps growing and i keep getting my name in front of people that's that's all i can expect and do you know why that's good for you is because you have identified three reasons that you like to make your show other than just money and downloads absolutely yeah love that um lauren tell us about tink's promo swap database and how we can access it i would also say can i add something Please. Sometimes people say, I did a promo swap and it, it did nothing. Mm. I think you have to do them over and over again because it is the slow and constant growth. But that means it's organic. That means it's working. So don't just do one. Do Look at it from a year or six months and then look at what happened. But anyway, uh, I love promo swap so much that we built a promo swap database on my website, tinkmedia.co, and it's free. Um you should all go in there, you know, when this is done and enter your show. It's just you put the name in and like a few details about the show. And um, everyone in there is interested in being your podcast friend. So that's the good thing. Sometimes I'll email a podcast and say, do you want to do a promo swap with us? And they won't know what that is. Everyone in this database is down to party. So <laughs> uh, you won't have to explain anything. You won't have to just say, I found you in the tank swap database do you want to work together and i just met someone at podcast movement who <laughs> there were two people and they said we met in your database and now we're here and now we're friends in real life and we're on and we are on a panel together so i think we should call it the friendship database yeah nice. petition to change it to the friendship database thank you lauren so yes if folks are interested in putting your show on tink's promo swap database go to tinkmedia.co and then on the navigation bar you will see 
instructions on how to get to the the swap database. I, I want to say one more thing about promo swaps. And I learned this from Lauren, um, because by the way, Lauren writes a ton for Descript on Creator HQ, descript.com slash blog. So if you want to see all of her great advice, um, you can find her there. And uh, in, in one of one of your articles, Lauren, you said something about uh, striving to do a promo swap for every single episode. Um, and that is that has been my goal this season. And I don't I don't get it every single time, but that has been that's been a much more worthwhile goal than, OK, how many downloads can I get from each promo swap or like right. what instead of looking at the results, just looking at procedure, just like, can I get a promo swap for every single episode? And that's just a nice way to keep your eye on the ball. I would even say make a spot for promo swaps in your episode, in your script. And even if you haven't arranged it, recommend a podcast, do a 30 second recommendation for another podcast. Anyway, your listeners will get used to hearing it. And then you can email the podcast you recommended and say, I recommended you. Look, you have a new friend. I want to just take a moment. We have about 20 minutes left and we have so many questions. Shout out to Christiana, who is handling some of those questions in the Q&A section on Crowdcast. Appreciate you very much. If we do not get to your question today, I would still love to help you out a few ways that you can stay in touch with us. And I will also share this at the end. Um, please join our Discord. I'm going to put the QR code up here. Join our Discord. Get in touch with us. Um, let us know if, oh, let me do that here. Join our Discord. We would love to answer your questions there. We are going to be having more and more live events like this on the Discord, but also a 201 session on podcast marketing. So scan that code. We will see you on Discord. All right. And um, with that, let's move on to our next slide. Let's talk about how to find your podcast friends. I, su I saw a few people ask questions about this. We are um, really huge advocates for finding podcast friends and then going on podcast play dates. Of course, you can use whatever terminology you want. You can find podcast collaborators and then you can set up collaborations with them if you don't want to be cheesy. But I like being cheesy sometimes. So let's talk about some of our favorite ways to find your podcast friends. Lauren, our favorite website, what is raphonic.com slash graph? Raphonic is a tool that a lot of people use to get their analytics and it costs money, but raphonic.com slash graph is free. I should get it tattooed onto my arm because I talk about it so much on calls with clients whenever I show it. So what it is, is using Apple data to show you your podcast universe or neighborhood, the shows that basically have your potential listeners. Um, and you know, I would, if, if, if you can go in right now and go to refonic.com slash graph, maybe type in your show or a comp to your show or a show that you like. So you can start playing around with it. You can swivel, you can zoom. I always tell clients, please at least act excited about this when you see it, because if you don't act excited, you will hurt my feelings because <laughs> it makes me very happy. And I get me on a Friday night with a glass of wine and I'm having fun on refonic.com. <laughs> And no, they do not pay me to say this. Uh, it really gives you a good idea of listeners you didn't know you had. You might see that, oh, there's food podcasts or they're listening to food podcasts or, you know, just it'll give you a good, it'll start your list for who your podcast friends should be. And I will say this only, you only find your show if you're like considerably large. Um, and so comps, like finding shows that are similar to yours is if you're a smaller show, that's, that's really what you want. So find a show that you think has a similar tone or similar topic and see what other shows people listen to there. And you'll still get some really good information. Player FM is a really great place to find podcast friends as well. If you go to Google or if you go to player FM, player.fm and you search for a pretty specific niche. You could search podcasts about, let's say podcasts about science communication. Speaking of Ashley's podcast, you will find a list of podcasts about science communication. And I'm not saying podcasts about science. I'm talking about podcasts about science communication. That's player.fm. And what's great about that website also is that it allows you to see how often or how recently an episode has been published. So you're not wasting your time potentially making quote unquote podcast friends with people whose podcasts have been dead for a long time because that's not really going to do anything for you. Good Pods is a really great way to find podcast friends. It's a podcast listening app, but it's a social podcast listening app. So you can see what your friends are listening to. And that's a really great way to just get in touch with potential podcasts that you could be collaborating with. I love the idea of surveying an audience. Ashley, have you surveyed your audience? No, not yet. Well, I, I did at Curiosity Daily. We did survey the audience, but I have not surveyed. And the what was that like? Science. It was it was great because uh, 
I mean, just just personally, like podcasting is so isolating. And so it's lovely to see your listeners as full human beings and like what they listen to and what they enjoy. Um, and it's it's so awesome to see like, oh, this person who likes Radiolab also likes my show. Like, mm, I feel kind of good about that, you know, uh, but also it's very good for advertisers. It's good to know what kind of content to uh, to promote more often um, and to, to schedule more often. So it's yeah, it's really good to do. Awesome. And then I mentioned this a little bit before, but just the idea of pretty regularly going to Apple Podcasts, going to Spotify and seeing, clicking on the categories, clicking on the category that your podcast resides in, and then seeing what shows are being featured, but then also seeing what shows are charting. And you can scroll all the way up to 190 and see what shows might be a little bit smaller. Maybe they're not reaching the top 10 or even the top 50, but they are still doing well in that category. Those are potential comps for you and places for you to start discovering some new potential collaborators. I also want to mention listennotes.com. Yes, That's one that I, I've used so much that apparently if you use it too much in one day, they're like, mm, you have to pay or you have to come back tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and uh, that's really good for kind of, you know, getting a ballpark estimate of what an, a, a podcast audience size is. Um, it'll say you're in the top 10%, the top 5%, the top 2.5%, something like that. And so if someone, you can tell, you can't tell how big their audience is, but you can tell whether they're larger or smaller than you. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And um, I think it's important to say, be careful with that percentage because it is taking that percentage from all of the podcasts that have ever existed ever. And a lot of those podcasts are dead, which is why sometimes if you get like 200 downloads per episode, you might be in the top 10% of all podcasts, which is pretty nuts. But hey, yeah. ride that home. Make make a, a mountain out of a molehill in that situation. <laughs> I find Listen Notes helpful for finding lists and finding podcast friends also. They have great yes. lists. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about a pitching party. Um, uh, there are a lot of places that you can pitch yourself when it comes to getting some PR for your podcast. Um, I really love podcast newsletters. I have a podcast recommendation newsletter called Earbuds Podcast Collective. Lauren has a podcast recommendation newsletter called Podcast the Newsletter. She also has a newsletter called Podcast Marketing Magic. There are also newsletters beyond the podcast world. There are newsletters in, newsletters in whatever niche your podcast is in, whatever category your podcast is in. A great resource for you to potentially find those newsletters is reletter.com. I'm sorry, I forgot to put this in uh, on the slide, but it's R E L E T T E R.com. Christiana, if you don't mind putting that in the chat, that would be great. Reletter.com. So you can search by category and find newsletters and then reach out to those newsletters, subscribe to those newsletters, and figure out if they might be interested in promoting your podcast in exchange for something. Uh, there's also guesting opportunities. We had a lot of people ask questions about guesting opportunities. You could also look for coverage on local news and then, of course, in alumni institutions. Ashley, have you had any success or have you? Have you dabbled in any of these bullet points before? Yeah, absolutely. I have been featured in Podcast the Newsletter. I have been featured on Earbuds. Uh, I, I think it was cool that specifically Earbuds, um, it was before you and I were coworkers. Oh, I so love that. it was totally legit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I have also guested on uh, lots of shows. I, I, some the the best ones are the ones that I reach out to. Sometimes people reach out to me and I'll guest on their shows, but it never feels like it's as quite a good fit audience wise as it is when I listen to a show and I go, oh my gosh, I need to be a guest on this show. Uh, and, and those are always like the best ones because it's, there's some reason that I wanted to be on that show. Right. And it's usually because there's, there's some, uh, they're kindred spirits and their audience is going to, going to like what I have to say. Love that. Lauren, what about you? You have a podcast newsletter, of course, but as the owner of Tink Media, you pitch a lot of your clients to newsletters. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, um, th the thing that's especially good is if you're, if you, if you have a new show, sometimes people get nervous about what they can do with that newness is great. If you have a new show and use the most out of the newness, uh, my newsletter, um, I love it to inform my readers about a new show, but I would say, um, my tip for new pitching newsletters right now, make sure you subscribe to every single one there is. There's not that many. Don't worry. There's not enough of them and read them and figure out which one you would be a good match for because they're all different. There's one that only talks about fiction shows that have ended. There's one that only talks about shows in Canada. So find the one that is perfect for you. I just listed all of the podcast newsletters, not all of them. There are so many more, but these are a bunch of different podcast newsletters that I think you should check out. They all have different opportunities 
for you to potentially be featured. Some have explicit opportunities where you can submit your show. Some are less explicit where you kind of need to dig in a little bit and figure out how other people are getting featured and then pitch yourself in a similar way. So I highly recommend searching for all of these. Take a screenshot of this. Find these newsletters. Subscribe to them. Read them. And before you pitch yourself, become familiar with them. All right. Uh, I want to backtrack a bit. I will come back to this slide in a moment. So don't worry if you did not have a chance yet to screenshot it. Okay. I want to talk briefly about guesting opportunities because we had a few questions pop up about this. How do you become a guest on a bunch of different podcasts? I would first identify which podcasts would be perfect for you. Make sure some of them are smaller than your show. Some of them are right around the size of your show and some of them are bigger than you. You can have some dream opportunities um, that, you, that, that would really be great for you to guest on. And then I think the first thing I'm going to say, Lauren, is, do you know? Sometimes we like to finish. You listen to the show first. That's exactly it. Yes. Make sure you actually listen to the show so that you're not pitching with without actually having an idea of what this show is about. Where do you actually fit in? How can you add something to this conversation? Ashley, have you pitched yourself? Uh, yes, but more like a. It's by the time I pitch myself, it's it's so casual because it's like say uh so i was on um the the show creator debates for example yes, um just i more. tweeted i tweeted about it about how great this show was because i loved it and and he tweeted back and said that's ah oh, so awesome to hear that is there any anything you you do to improve and i said uh maybe have me on cuz i could talk about this and he did eventually have me on like i just like shot my shot and and i got on um so that's generally like my best experiences have been things like that where I just tweet at someone or I just email someone saying like how much I love the show and also I have this to offer if you want to have me on. And then I'll just briefly touch on alumni organizations. This kind of goes back to leveraging absolutely everything that you have. What are you a part of? What have you been a part of? And pitch, pitch, pitch. Think about all the places that might want to highlight you. Think of a unique reason why they would highlight you and then let them know. All right, let's go to this one more time, I'll give you a few seconds to take a screenshot of this podcast newsletters. We love podcast newsletters. Highly recommend. I should see a lot of a lot of new subscribers rolling in right now. So should Lauren. <laughs> All right. We will share that again at the end if uh, if folks need it. All right. So let's briefly touch on pitching yourself to podcast listening apps. Apple and Spotify both have forms where you can pitch your podcast to be featured. It does not guarantee that you're going to be featured. If you are interested in getting those links, please feel free to reach out to me, especially uh, I, I'm going to give you my, my Twitter handle, but I will also give you my email because I want folks to know that I am a resource for you, especially if you are a Descript user or if you are a Squadcaster. You can email me at ariel at Descript.com or on Twitter. I'm at Ari this and that. I'll share that in the chat in a moment. Apple and Spotify both have these forms. CastBox does not have a form, but um, you can pitch yourself to be featured. Same with Good Pods. Good Pods makes it a little bit easier. Good Pods, you, you should claim your show, uh, and then you should answer the creator Q&A. So familiarize yourself with these apps. Similar to the podcast newsletters, I would download these apps if you don't have them already. Become familiar with them, figure out what podcasts they tend to feature, and then figure out why your podcast would fill a hole that that is gaping. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to tell you guys, I, I pitched myself to Apple Podcasts and Spotify for the very first time last week uh, for a Halloween episode. So let's Ooh. see. We'll see. Just fingers crossed. Wait, you should pitch yourself also to CastBox because they're searching as well. Oh, so great. And that episode it. to me. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. So again, let me know if you want links to those submission forms, ariel at descript.com. All right. All right. That is... We're about to reach the end. I will give you a code for a free month, and then we will spend the next six minutes answering as many questions as we possibly can. Okay, here is our code for one free month of Descript Pro. Use code PODCAST30 at checkout for that. All right, Lauren, Ashley, do you want to share your social media handle so that people can stay in touch with you? And as you're doing that, I'm going to queue up some questions. I am at Smashley Hamer on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram, don't go to Instagram. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm also on Blue Sky and Threads, trying to. Sure. Uh, my po podcast is Taboo Science at Taboo Science on both of those platforms, and Taboo Science dot show is the website. I am at Lauren Passell on Twitter and Instagram. L a u r e n p a s s e l l. 
If you want to find me, go to tinkmedia.co. If you lose me, I'm always there. So we are now going to try to rapid fire through as many questions as we can. How do you survey your audience? Like what apps or tools do you use? I want to briefly shout out a resource that I always point to. Soundsprofitable.com is amazing. It's a newsletter that goes out every week, but they also put out tons of other resources and research. A few months ago, I want to say February, they put out an article that was called What We Talk About When We Talk About Podcasts. And in it, five questions are listed for if you plan to survey your audience these are the questions that you should ask. They are great questions. One of them is, should my podcast be longer or shorter? And you'll notice there that I'm not saying, is my podcast too long? I am saying, should it be longer or shorter? I am asking for a very specific answer. Highly recommend subscribing to Sounds Profitable and reading that article. Again, it is called What We Talk About When We Talk About Podcasts. Lauren, Ashley, how should we do surveys? Anything else to add to that? Um, Lauren, you, you probably know better. I, I, what I would have done is uh, make a Google form and put it in your show notes um, and, and direct people easy to peasy. it. Easy peasy. Yeah. It also helps if you can reward them in some way for a chance to win even the smallest Amazon gift card. You'll get a lot more responses. Love that. For a pod swap, what is the normal frequency like to do, Like they do it one one time or over several episodes? Question mark. I, I had to put want. on the question affect towards the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, again, a lot of people like to think that there's a specific way you should be doing things, but I want to empower you to say, I'll do it however I want. And I'll just think about the leverage that I have. Sometimes people do it by number of downloads, which is a good way to even out the score between a, a larger and a smaller podcast. But yeah, it's, it's whatever. Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, next question are there pre-roll or post-roll CTAs that are best to use for this to help beyond subscribe? My tip would be, you know, as a listener, I hear the same CTAs every single time. Make yours different every time and make yours unique to you. Yeah, I think people tend to glaze over if they hear the same calls to action every single episode. So, and that that goes in, in many different contexts. Oh, I think Ariel, you have gone quiet. Have is that the same for you, Lauren? Yeah. Oh, I'm back. Oh, you okay? You're back. You're back. Okay, that's Ooh, why you're pulling it. Yeah. Um. Ooh, uh, thank you. Ooh, I'm so glad I'm back. Glad to be back. Um. I think a lot of people, when you're listening to a podcast, try to put yourself in the shoes of of your listeners. Where do you lose interest when you're listening to podcasts? What makes you want to skip ahead? What makes you be done with this episode and move on to the next episode? And then think about how you can kind of shock your listeners back into making sure they listen to the end of your episode. All right. Next question. What do you recommend for someone who is really small, like just starting out? When does promo swap slash feed swaps start becoming practical? And I just want to say these questions are awesome. You are asking all the right questions. Lauren, you have you have great yeah go ahead i would say you're never too small for a promo swap you're never too small for a there's, promo swap <laughs> there's other shows that are starting out just like you and also in the in the promo swap database there's a ton of shows with maybe 100 or 200 downloads there's some really really big ones in there but there's also some small ones i would say it's never too uh early to start a podcast friendship and letting it grow Ashley, anything to add to that? Nope, that's great. Yeah, I just knew Lauren had really good advice for small podcasts, so I wanted to make sure she said something. Love that. Yes. When we market, is it a good idea to market our own website in addition to the content? I say this as there are so many channels and platforms out there that we spend more time promoting them instead of our own content and brand. Hmm. Uh, so one thing that I have learned, this might not be specifically the answer to your question, but uh, I mean, what I try to do is always use the same platform every time, uh, just just to reduce confusion and to get the most bang for my buck. And um, I learned about pod.link from both of you. Uh, pod.link is a great platform that will let you, uh, it, it, it gives you icons for basically every single listening app. So if you go to a pod.link link, um, you'll be able to open that podcast in the app you use to listen, which is so great. Um, there are other, sometimes your uh, podcast hosting platform will have like a, 
its own link that will do the same thing and actually like gather analytics on who uh, clicks on it. So look into that. Uh, but yeah, pod.link is a great way to, to link to things. Awesome. In the interest of time, unfortunately, we're going to have to cap it at that. I will once again bring up our community discord because Christiana, thank you so much for answering all the questions throughout this past hour. She also created a podcast friends back channel within our discord. So if you want to make some more podcast friends, join that discord, join 16,000 people who are hanging out on that discord. It's really amazing. Lauren, Ashley, tell us again where we can find you and learn more from you. Um, at Smashley Hamer on the socials and at Taboo Science on the socials, uh, taboosciencesshow and just, you know, on wherever you listen to podcasts. Lauren? Um, at Lauren Passell on socials and tinkmedia.co is where you'll find me elsewhere. And if you have questions for me about podcast marketing and or how to use Descript and Squadcast, Ariel at Descript.com or Ari this and that on Twitter. Thank you all so much for joining us. This will be available for you to rewatch if you want to pick up some of these gems again. Lauren Ashley, thank you so much. Christiana, thank you in the in the so question much. in the Q and A. Appreciate so much you. Fun.